and welcome to Footy Plus brought to you by Toyota. Today we're at Adelaide Oval to bring you another show full of all things South Australian sport. Coming up on this episode, we catch up with the state's marathon star. Suddenly you realise how important it is to, to look after your body and the pregnancy and, and the young one inside. And the football fraternity shows us what mateship is all about. It is the footy community, whether it be local or whether it be SNFL or, or IFL, but, uh, we look after our own. It's the company that brought the athlete-led leadership concept to professional sport and played a crucial role in Central District's domination in the sample. And now the leading team's organisation has been working with the Adelaide Crows. So just what does this motivational group get up to behind closed doors? Well, we caught up with leadership guru Daniel Healy to get an insight. Healy on the left leg, charge for Central's, Healy what a go! This is how most football fans remember Daniel Healy. Now Healy from 50, loads up a long kick. A raking left footer for Central District and St Kilda, who was a four-time Bulldogs Premiership captain. These days, he's still making his mark on football teams, but off the field rather than on it. It's this concept that none of us are as smart as all of us. It's the mantra at the heart of leading teams, the in-demand motivators who have created and nurtured high-performance cultures in elite sporting teams across the country. We break a, a team down into two parts. There's the mechanics or the, or the, the structure, the strategy, the roles, the, the, the org chart, and then there's the dynamics. And, and for us, the dynamics is the culture and the behaviours. We still believe that the dynamics is what drives that performance. Leading teams empowers all levels of the team from coach and captain to young players and rookies to have their say, creating a confronting but ultimately trusting environment that builds relationships and raises standards. Look, there's been plenty of autocratic leaders through history who have done very well in sport and otherwise and they probably will continue to do so. I guess we just feel this model has more sustainability about it. It demands team leaders and even coaches accept and embrace their own vulnerability and expose themselves to criticism from their peers. It's the vulnerability to actually say, I stuffed up. Um, you know, we've had some challenges here over the last year or so, and for people to be able to say, you know, we didn't get that right, that's a really important bit. Because if a coach or a leader can say that, it means I walk away as a follower and say, maybe I should look at my own performance. The leading team's model is based around, you know, peer feedback. Um, and so, you know, importantly, when leading teams started at the club, you know, the first people that got feedback was myself and probably the captain. So, you know, it's, we probably model the behaviour that's required in terms of what I'm doing well, what I, you know, can keep doing, what I... Can, uh, can start doing and what I need to stop doing. The leading team's philosophy was first trialled on Central District when its co-founder Ray McLean, who was teaching leadership at the nearby RAF base, applied his theories to Alan Stewart's Bulldogs in 1993. I still believe that was strongly influential in, in what happened 10 years later with the, with the run of premierships I had. The captain's comment after the 2004 grand final victory was telling. Could be any one of us, that's, that's the advantage of this side. There's so many great leaders amongst them and it's really only just the name because everyone's a leader out there. Healy stayed in contact with McLean and built a post-football career with leading teams. He now heads up a team of four in SA. Its influence stretches far beyond sport, with 85% of its business now in the corporate realm. We love the fact that we're able to help a lot of businesses across SA do similar stuff to what we're doing here at the Crows. We're a fantastic group of young men who come in with all their own values and, and morals that we really value at the footy club. Leading teams really allows them to, to build that into a foundation for them um, to, to work on what it looks like to be the best they can be as an Adelaide Crow. This weekend marks the 100th episode of The Crow Show and to celebrate we'll take a look back at some of the best stories from the past five years. Plus there's an exclusive announcement. Make sure you tune into Channel 7 tomorrow at 11.30am with Mark Bickley and Alana Smith. Adelaide's marathon star Jess Trengove admits her priorities are changing. Now, 17 weeks pregnant, she's suddenly more worried about her health than tearing it up on the training track. But with running and competing in her DNA, she hasn't ruled out a crack at next year's Tokyo Olympics.
she's due to give birth to her first child in November. There's so much to be excited about. <laughs> and while fitness will always remain a priority for the two-time Commonwealth Games bronze medalist, there's been a seismic shift in her perspective. Suddenly you realise how important it is to, to look after your body and the pregnancy and, and the young one inside, so it changes your drive. Like in training when I go hard, I go hard usually, but now I'm just very respectful of like looking at my heart rate, monitoring my temperature, and it's not about the workout now, it's about just staying fit within my limits. The 31-year-old finished 39th in the London Olympic Marathon in 2012 and 22nd in Rio and would love to improve further in Tokyo in August next year. But those games might come around too quickly. We'll see how the pregnancy goes, how the birth goes and how those you know, early months go as a mum and if, if I can get back into training and you know, marathon training, that's great, but I don't want to you know, set that goal because I know that, you know, enjoying motherhood and just being there for my baby will be the absolute priority. Even if she doesn't make it to Tokyo, there's little doubt she'll eventually return to the marathon circuit, inspired by the outstanding past performances of other new marathon mums like Paula Radcliffe and Lisa Ondieki. I've always got sort of later goals that I can target because the I guess benefit of being a distance runner and an endurance athlete is age isn't a limitation, it's just how long your body and your mind is prepared to do it for. Future marathons in Berlin and New York remain high on Trengove's agenda, as does a tilt at another Commonwealth Games medal in Birmingham in 2022. The valued support network includes Athletics SA Coach of the Year Adam Diddick, her husband Dylan Stenson and of course her treasured family, with sister Abby and brother Jack of Port Adelaide sure to be with her every step of the way. This is a bear that my sister and brother gave me in 2000, it was Christmas of 2010 because I was heading to Spain later that year for the World Cross Country Championships and they said we can't be there in person with you but we'll be there with you in spirit. So it's got a little picture of the three of us on there. And uh, he's been on every overseas trip with me since. Whilst I've um, absolutely loved the running journey, I've always known in the back of my mind that I wouldn't compromise my ability to start a family by chasing my running goals. So I'm uh, really happy. <laughs> Inaugural Adelaide Pros Club champion Mark Mickham was a towering figure on the footy field, known for his authority and courage. And these days he's having to draw on those qualities in his fight against Parkinson's disease. He is a much loved character and recently the footy fraternity rallied together to deliver a surprise. And a good mark. Well done, Mickham. Mark Mickham is that club champion. The kick from Mickham. Oh, beautiful goal. For those who remember Mark Micken's imposing presence and game-breaking abilities on the football field, these images have been hard to process. But having helped so many in a career spanning six football clubs and almost 40 years, it's not surprising that so many would want to repay the debt in his time of need. It is the footy community, whether it be local or whether it be SNFL or, or AFL. We're very lucky that um, you know, if someone is hurting in some way, shape or form, that uh, we look after our own. Micken recently underwent groundbreaking deep brain stimulation surgery in Melbourne to ease his Parkinson's symptoms. He would be away for six weeks. Just enough time for a bunch of old mates and other volunteers to undertake a stunning renovation of his Western Adelaide home. Mark's been so good for me through my footy career, uh, giving me opportunity, so this is the least I can do, really. Anyone who comes across him just knows he's just a gentle giant and a lovely guy. He's helped a lot of people, so it's nice for us to give something back to him in a, in a small way. People have come from everywhere to help out, so it's probably got a little bit bigger than what we anticipated. Ex-West Adelaide teammate Bernie Conlon was the ringleader. Got the nickname Rubbers, because his arms breach up and come out of nowhere and take the ball. And he was on hand as Micken, who'd left behind a dying garden, returned to a pristine front lawn. Man, what have been doing? Sorry mate, someone stole your front yard. 
Thanks very much. You're a star. Mick and overwhelmed as the entire renovation crew was revealed and he and partner Callie and sons Fletcher and Spencer were given a tour of the new interior. Now I've got a ducted split system oh. unit oh, outside keeping you cosy and warm. Wow, that's unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> That is unreal. Mick and surgery was a success. It doesn't cure the condition because there is no known cure for it, but the symptom of, uh, in particular, uh, my tremor in my feet has been, uh, it's just about gone. And so now I've got a lot more energy and uh, feeling a lot better. He soon hopes to return to his job as a relief teacher at St Michael's College, but he's most looking forward to a kick and a catch with his sons. Get the cricket bat out and the, and the footy and uh, and have uh, have some fun. That's for sure. I just want to get back to a, as much of a normal lifestyle as I can. I think I I should be able to go close to that because of the way I'm feeling since the operation. Three cheers for rabbits. If you're a Crows fan, make sure you show your support and sign up as a free We Flyers One member. Join today at weflyers1.afc.com.au and stay on top of all the latest breaking news from the club. Tomorrow the Matildas will kickstart their World Cup campaign against Italy and selectors are adamant that they've chosen the perfect mix of experience and youth to ensure that their team has the best chance of success. We caught up with some of Australia's past players to get an insight into what we have to look forward to over in France. We have some absolute superstars in our Matildas team at the moment uh, and they're all coming into their prime of football so I think this is the best chance we will have of going all this way. I truly believe they have the talent, they have the ability, they also have the mindset. I think we've got the players and the X Factor players. Sam Kerr! The player I'm most looking forward to seeing would definitely be Sam Kerr. The world is stopping and having a look at how talented this girl is and she can inspire those around her with um, achieving the unimaginable. The player I'm most looking forward to see is Caitlin Ford. You know, the speed that she's got, the way she can run with the ball at her feet, she can score goals as well. Her good friend Sam Kerr in front of her, I think the combination play and the way they're going to play together off each, off each other is going to be exceptional. She's ready to blossom as a player and I think this World Cup she's going to do it. The greatest challenge for the Matildas, I think, is going to be carrying the weight of a nation on their shoulders. Pressure plays a huge part. That comes with um, the expectation of, of needing to do better than quarterfinals. I'm confident in saying that they'll be in the top four and in the, in the semis. We know the US, we know how to play against them. It'll be the teams like England and France that I think will really challenge us. They can beat the te best teams in the world and they know themselves that they can beat them. And they've played together for such a long time that I think now's our time to shine and this is our moment. They're in control of their destiny. To celebrate the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup, Optus is offering school-aged children complimentary access to matches on Optus Sport for the next month. For more information, visit the website or head into your local Optus store. Each week on Footy Plus, we take a look at something that caught our eye on social media. And Adelaide United have announced the return of not one, but two of their favourite sons. Former Socceroo Bruce Jitte will take the role of Director of Football, while Eugene Galekovic has been named Goalkeeping Coach. Reds fans have embraced the return of the club greats, as United commit to rebuilding a strong culture under new coach Hertian Verve. Make sure you keep up to date on all the latest Crows news and behind the scenes action on afc.com.au, as well as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Keep an eye out for us on Channel 7 and 7 Plus in the weeks ahead. Bye for now.